Policemen are said to be ministers, pastors and policemen. They're a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. Yeah, you should be afraid. For it, it, the government does not bear the sword for nothing. It is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Look, we, we've got a society basically where the conscience is misinformed. We've got a society basically where people have quieted their own conscience by deciding that they're better than their conscience says they are. We've got a society of people raised without the discipline, the love, the stability of a home. And now they're running around in this country in all directions, and it's left to the police to try to make some sanity out of this chaos. These are people that have evil hearts to the core. We all do. But they haven't been restrained by the gospel, the transforming power of Christ. Now we're seeing what is going to happen because God ordained government. Resistance to authority is rebellion against God, not only government. Resistance should be, must be punished. And when it is punished, they are doing the work of God. This is the duty of, this is why there's a justice system. If society destroys the, the law of God, takes the Bible out, mocks it, makes it illegal. In the schools, if society does everything it can to silence the conscience, then society does everything it can possibly do to destroy real marriage, family, children. And then society's got one more step to go defund the police, just destroy the respect for authority. The defunding follows the destruction of respect. Then you do have the Lord of the Flies. Well, what you're seeing these days is what it would look like and could look like if this rebellion continued to diminish those who keep order, protecting good people and punishing those who do evil. We're watching that being assaulted massively, more than I've ever seen in my years. There's one more restraint, that's the church. And just saying that, I feel a pain in my heart. Because a lot of these people that are riding in the streets are riding right in front of churches. A lot of churches in the communities of all these major cities, what have they been saying? It's more likely that some of the people in those churches would be joining them than trying to stop them. But the church, critical. The last stand. Go to Matthew 5, 13. The conscience is a personal authority. The family is a parental authority. The government is a social authority and the church is a spiritual authority. Uh, I just read verses 13 to 16, Matthew 5. You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We, we aren't just an isolated group in a closed up building. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. You, emphatic and plural. You, he's talking to his disciples. Here is the presupposition. The world is decaying. The world is corrupt. And the world is dark. And those who follow Christ are to be salt that slows the decay and light that diminishes the dark. Salt was once so difficult to obtain that it was highly valued and many different cultures in ancient times used it as currency. Salt was of immense value to the Jews and the Greeks and the Tamils and the Chinese and the Hittites. In fact, the word Salary comes from the Latin salt because people were paid in salt. And if somebody wasn't a very good employee, you would say, hey, he's not worth his salt. For the Romans, salt was more valuable than gold. 
There were caravans, you read, of 40,000 camels traversing the Sahara Desert to bring salt to markets because salt was such critical preservative. It slowed down corruption. In fact, salt pretty much determined the location of the world's greatest cities. Salt created and destroyed empires. Salt caused population shifts. All this because of its power to preserve from corruption. And like salt, the presence of the children of God, disciples of Christ, Christian believers, the church, slows down the decay and corruption of society. We're the most precious commodity this world has. But let's open the bars and keep the churches closed. The influence of goodness, the influence of virtue, the influence of humility, the influence of unselfishness, the influence of kindness, the influence of compassion, mercy, the influence of love, and more importantly, the influence of holiness and godliness restrains the corruption. That's why Peter says, we are a holy people. You are the salt of the earth. You preserve. You're the final restraining power. All over the world, the church is being attacked, isn't it? Pastors are being killed. Churches are being shut down, destroyed. As society catapults, into the black hole of anti-God oblivion. Now, you are the salt of the earth, but here's a warning. If the salt has become, and the word in the Greek is morino, from which we actually get the word moron, a moron is a non-functioning human being, somebody who can't think right. So if the salt can't function, if the salt has lost its ability to preserve, like much salt that lies on the shores around the Dead Sea, which is full of salt, you actually can lay on the top of it and float. But that salt becomes corrupted and polluted. When salt loses its ability to preserve, it is because it has lost its purity. Its purity. And this is why I say this is a sad thing for me because church after church after church after church is not salting the culture with godliness. False teachers abound, charlatans with religious Ponzi schemes, taking money from poor people on the promise of miracles and wealth, pastors whose lives are unholy and immoral, entertainment centers trying to make sinners feel good about themselves, denying, in many cases, whole denominations, denying the veracity of scripture, denying the deity of Christ, denying the gospel, popular mega churches just entertaining sinners little concern for holiness godliness virtue righteousness it's not their message they don't confront sin they don't call for holy living that would empty the place so we have to say that satan's done some serious damage to the conscience to the family to the government and to the church Salt works indirectly. Salt works secretly. So does godliness and so does righteousness. Light, on the other hand, works openly. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp, put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. This is the shining light of good works. There's a subtle secret influence of righteousness and there's an open exemplary aspect of righteousness. 